hey and welcome back to the channel if you are joining us for our tuesday night live man you are in for a treat tonight we are here live on the channel every single tuesday night and tonight we have a special treat for you these are the kind of episodes where you're going to leave inspired. You're going to leave like motivated. You're going to leave encouraged. And with tonight's guest, you're definitely going to leave with a few chuckles. And uh, we're going to be diving into the whole gastric sleeve. And tonight, um, our, our guest here on the channel has lost a significant amount of weight. She had the gastric sleeve done. And what we're going to be talking about is that she, even after the gastric sleeve, how she was still overweight after having the surgery. And so make sure you are like, listen, whether you are just on a weight loss journey, you've considered having a gastric sleeve, or maybe you've had it. This woman is uh, going to give a lot of answers to what to do if you're considering it, what her recommendation would be. And also like so many people have had it and then still find themselves in this place where they're considered overweight or obese. And so I can't wait for you to hear from her tonight. So without further ado, please help me welcome to the channel, Melissa Hager. Woo! Hey, hi everybody. What's up? The crowd goes wild. I know they're all going wild and their houses are like, yeah. I love it. Welcome to the channel. And so, uh, Melissa, you had the gastric sleeve surgery back October 24th of 2019. Correct. And you, uh, prior to that, and see, this is what I love about your story. And I can't wait for them to hear the journey you've been on because it's been quite a journey. And so your struggle with weight started when you were, um, how old do you remember like that starting? Birth. <laughs> I don't remember birth. But... <laughs> Listen, I was born a month overdue. Uh, I was over 10 pounds and it was, I was the first grandchild on, uh, the special side of the family, like the, the, the my mom's side where my, my grandma to this day, she calls me her favorite. Well, I tell her that to remind her, but the, everybody wanted to feed me. Everybody wanted to give me things. There was not another grandchild for three years. So I got whatever I wanted. I'm reminded of it often. Uh, so yeah, from little, I was overweight and I was pretty ignorant to it. I had no idea. Uh, even going into my teenage years, I, I was extremely overweight looking back, but I didn't know. Nobody brought it up. Nobody put it in my face. And thankfully, even in grade school and high school, I was athletic. I played basketball. I played volleyball. I mm -hmm. shot putting discus. I had scholarships to go to college for that. I still have a weightlifting record at my high school. Um, I wasn't like a slob that sat around doing nothing. But if in fifth grade, I crossed over 200 pounds and never got close. And then in adulthood lived in the three hundreds. So I grew up on a farm, you know, everything on the farm was natural. We're eating our own animals. We're eating out of our garden. So eat as much as you want. Oh, and you can't leave the table until your plate is cleared. And my brother and sister were pickers, you know, they were thin and, and, didn't have the appetite I had. So I would be like, come on, let's go. I want to get outside and play. And so I would just start eating stuff off of their plates too. And everything had butter and sour cream and lard. We made, we made chocolate chip cookies with pig lard, like no joke. I mean, they were, they were amazing. They were awesome. I didn't know you could make chocolate chip cookies with anything else. Like I had no idea. It's what you knew. That's what I knew. So um, yeah, I, <laughs> my heaviest was 366 pounds, but from like 22, 23, all the way up into my thirties, I had lost a hundred pounds three different times getting on different programs, getting on different, you know, this is it, this is the thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And if you can do math at all, if I lost it a hundred, a hundred pounds, three times, yes, that means I gained it four times. <laughs> and each time it's a little bit more, like every time yeah. you raise the ceiling. And when mm -hmm. I had my weight loss surgery, I was 366 pounds. Like I just couldn't believe it. I thought I am rounding 400 pounds. What happened? I have two little kids and a husband and yeah. what happened? Yeah crazy. Well, and like most people, right? Like we, once we've tried all the diet and we've had some success and then we've gained it back, we get to a point where we're just desperate. We're just like, we want to be done. We don't want to diet the rest of our lives. And for a lot of people, I mean, weight loss surgery, the gastric sleeve, the gastric, all the things, it can appear 
like it's the easy way. It can appear like, okay, if I just, because a lot of us, most of us, 99.9% of us struggle with a food addiction. And I know like with weight loss surgery, they tell you that you just can't eat it. So that seems super appealing that if I just can't eat it, then that, it's hey, done. it's yeah. right. And so you wound up going down that road. And, you know, I, through conversations we've had, I know like other people have said, and you've even heard this said, oh, weight loss surgery. That's like the easy, it's like the easy way, but let's really talk about this, that for just a minute, because you had to go through some pretty intense things, like 10 days of counseling or no, a whole bunch of counseling. months. Yeah. Months of counseling leading months up to it. Yep. You have to do a 300 question, like psychotherapy test to make sure that they want to know like where you land in your psyche, which I don't know if there's a pass or fail to that. I've never heard of anyone failing that. I think they just put you through it yeah. without any real answers. Like you take it. And I know for that appointment, I was like excited to learn about myself. They told me nothing. They're just like, yep. Okay. You did it. I'm like, okay. So what'd you learn about me? That's kind of weird. I got nothing. I got nothing. And then 10 days, there's a 10 day pre-op diet. <sighs> 10 days before surgery, you get nothing but liquids, like milk and protein shakes and water for 10 days. I was 366 <laughs> pounds. Do you, like at that point, you've become so addicted to having whatever you want. You, It's hard to even fathom. My family had to leave. My, my husband picked up my sons and they went to a hotel for the first like three or four days because I was a raging lunatic, but my surgeon put the fear of God in me. He said, listen, if I open you up and I so much as find a kernel of corn in there, you will not have this surgery. I will close you back up and you will start this process all over again. I was wow. like, ah, so you just, you know, you just can't, you, you just can't do it. So, and then right. you have the surgery and you're like, okay, so you have this restriction, you're healing, you're, you're like, okay, I have control. I have control. I'm I'm excited. Everything is new and exciting in the beginning. Everything. And then that excitement wears off and you're like, hmm, wow, I have food addiction. I'm a binge eater. Uh, like, now what do I do? I can't do any of this stuff. And I didn't actually fix these problems. I just took the ability away. Yeah. So you're you're like mourning the loss of something and you either take up other habits or you push it to the limit till you're throwing up or you're you've seen me pace the hallways. Like I eat too much and I have to walk to like get it to burn off. And, and you can't even, the food like comes up like this on you and you can't even swallow your spit. Like I've spit in a cup. I've walked around outside spitting. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Cause I wasn't actually healed of any of these things no. at all. None. No. And like, I can remember you and I having these conversations of you were like, because you know, I remember people, you were eating so little. And I remember people saying to you, well, gosh, if you just would have done that in the first place, you would have lost the weight. But you were like, yes, but I didn't have the self-control to do it. And so this obviously gave you self-control because you couldn't do it. But you're still, I mean, I can only imagine the torment. Like, I remember you telling the story about, you know, you would sit and you would just like get a, a cheeseburger or get a whatever. And you would just eat it until you made yourself sick because all those habits were still there. Because when you went into surgery, you obviously went in as a morbidly obese woman. Right. Well, you had morbidly obese habits. When you came out, they didn't equip you. They didn't teach you nothing. They just sliced, diced, chopped and said, okay, go be Mary. <laughs> yeah. Go, go live. Yeah. But at first, because you're so restricted, you did have some success in the beginning. Yeah. Like you lost a yeah. hundred pounds. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Yeah. And then, and then just like anything, I mean, your stomach is a balloon. And if you, especially someone that, struggles with binging. Yeah. So the pandemic hit, we're home alone, like we're all home in the house. You are eating, you just eat and, and your stomach, as the day goes on, you can eat more. So I would, you know, I have a fairly small breakfast and then the stomach is stretched a little bit. Then you can have a little bit more for lunch and then you feel some room and you're like, oh, let me stuff a snack in there and then let me have some dinner. And you just you the more it goes on. I remember probably three months into the pandemic, I was like eating normal plates of food and I thought wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be able to eat that much. Like I'm only supposed to be able to eat a cup of food. What in the world? And have I drank water ever this week? No, 
I have it because I'm like, nope, I want to save room for food. So you, it's in the constipation. Oh, my God. Not to be TMI, but that's the worst. And really? it's because you're told to eat high protein so your teeth don't fall out and your hair don't fall out. You eat all this high protein food, which, you know, to me, a Baconator from Wendy's, that's full of protein, <laughs> right? Like that's two slabs of meat and bacon. And if I just cut away at it all day, that's a ton of protein. Oh my and goodness. then all of a sudden you got this like hard rock oh my god i remember two specific times i was so constant and i had never been constipated in my life and it was the most horrifying awful uh, like oh i will never relive that ever 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 and after the first time i was like i'm never doing this again i need to do whatever i have to do to not be constipated again i had no idea nobody told me what caused it nobody told me why it happened so it happened again and all i was doing was taking stool softener because when you go on the bariatric pages on facebook that's what they tell you to take on a daily basis is that healthy get out of here that's not how to live like this is insane and and you know, you know, like vegetables are roughage. Vegetables will help. Well, I didn't want to waste room on vegetables. Those aren't right. good. I'm gonna eat more meat. I'm gonna go get another baconator. You know, it's just it's insane, like the lack of knowledge and like not understanding how stuff works. It's crazy. Really? And and at my follow-up appointment, they talked numbers. Like that's when we finally talked numbers. And I wanted to be in the 100s. Like there was a time where I would have told you my goal was to weigh 199. Like if I could just weigh 199 and be there forever, I would have been happy with that. And my doctor looked me straight in the face and was like, okay, well, let's get that out of your mind right now because I'm going to tell you what you really should shoot for. And I thought, oh, okay. And he did this little calculation thing and he's like, you started at 366, you should land between 230 and 250. I was like, what? I mean, I turned as white as a ghost and he's like, you should be happy. You don't even have to work as hard as you thought. And I was like, I did not get cut open to still be 200 pounds. Are you kidding me? And he was dead serious. He's like, we're going by the numbers. We're going by the averages. We're going, you know, we've done this hundreds of thousands of times mm -hmm. and we know the numbers. 230 pounds would be great for you and you'll still be healthier than you are right now. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> well, and you know, obviously that's true. 230 pounds is healthier than 366, but like you didn't do all that to go from morbidly obese to obese. Like your <laughs> idea, your goal was to be healthy, not right. trade one bad, one worse for a little bit, not right. worse. You know? I didn't want to go from 4X to still having an X in my size. That was not the point. <laughs> exactly. Well, and so right around there, so you had been losing pretty steady. Like Melissa and I have been in each other's life. We have been friends for a long, long time, like back from the early 2000s. And I can remember you busting into the 200s. Like it seemed like you got went from 360 to 260 pretty fast. Yeah. And then you kind of stalled out there. And then you went from 260 to 230. And I can remember that's where we had a conversation and we were, I was sitting in my daughter's room on the floor folding clothes. And you were like, I remember the conversation. You were like, Carmen, I'm just like stalled. And I don't know, I'm not eating a ton. And I think this is where, and the doctors had already told you this, right? Yes. So now I, I remember, in my head. Yes. I can remember you saying, I think this is just where my body wants to settle. And then like you ask the question, you're like, what do you think? <laughs> Dumb question. Never ask Armin that. She Never. opened the door. And I said, I think you're eating too much. And that's why. And she's like, you really think that? And so that was really because you and I had both lost weight, right? But we used completely separate things and completely separate whatevers. And that was really the first time it appeared from my end that you were open to like, listen to, okay, what the heck do you want to say? What do you got? Like, yeah, because I think you're in a frustrated place. Right. Right. Well, and I just, I didn't do all that to still end up there. And it yeah. was, it was very cool for me to watch you live out loud what you were doing and to hang on to it. And and not that it's always super easy for you, but you make it look pretty easy and you you go off the rails and do your own thing on date night or if you're having a family party or whatever, and then get back to a schedule, get back to a plan. And I was just like, okay, so 
what is this plan? How how does this work? Why why is this seem like logical to you? And I feel like I'm spending so much brain power on this nonstop, and I'm going nowhere. I'm just spinning my wheels in a big mud puddle. And then what? the biggest transformation just mm -hmm. oh. God, I cannot say enough about it. I just can't. So we were, we had, we had started the show Biggest Transformation. That's right here on YouTube. It airs every Wednesday. And we were wrapping up season three and season four was getting to open for applicants. And you and I, like you knew I was doing it and we had chatted about it, but it just never, like we were friends both on different paths. Like I knew you would have the gastric sleeve. And again, like I was totally fine with that because I like, I remember us having the conversation of, listen, like that's your path and that's okay. Right. But what was it that made you be like, even want to jump into the thing to the biggest transformation <laughs> well um another friend of ours jen <laughs> she's like i'm doing it what's your problem and i was like uh, what's my problem i was like i don't know i don't think i don't think i can like i had weight loss surgery i don't think she's like what do you mean that makes no sense and i really the, the having the weight loss surgery kind of started making me feel like an alien here. I'm hanging out with all these people that, you know, lost mm -hmm. it the hard way, if you will. And, you know, weight loss surgery is supposed to be the easy way out. I'm a weight loss surgery failure at this point because I haven't got under 200 pounds. And uh, Jen's like, no, you dingleberry. This is exactly what you need. Why, why not take this opportunity to get the education, learn what you need, learn what you needed to know 15 years ago and run with it. And I was like, oh, and I remember asking you, I was like, Carmen, if I applied for the biggest transformation, like, would you even consider letting me in? And you were like, of course I would. If you meet you know, the criteria, obviously there's an application process process, but I was like, so having the weight loss surgery doesn't affect that. And you're like, no, that isn't, that's irrelevant. And I was like, oh, and it does for whatever reason that, that surgery like alienates you It like, even mm -hmm. when you look in all the different social medias, there's like the, the weight loss people that are all into fitness and eating healthy. And then there's the people that had weight loss surgery. And for some reason mm -hmm. they're looked upon like, kind of ignorant and they don't know what they're doing. And I know a lot of weight loss people that exercise, that eat vegetables that again, now I do because I've looked for them. But at the time you're like two separate lands that don't get to collide at all. And I, and, and you've brought that together, which is outstanding. It's so freaking cool. If more people that have had weight loss surgery could be exposed to you, like it would change the world. It would absolutely change the world. But yeah, I applied for season four of The Biggest Transformation. And that has been the biggest transformation of my whole journey. It's It's been the, you know, 27 pounds later, it those 27 pounds are more important to me than any of the other pounds I've ever lost and gained ever because they're legit 27 pounds that will never come back ever. And I can confidently say that. So what something happened just like a week ago. Uh Oh, what happened when you crossed into a brand new area? A week ago, what happened? So I'm just saying I am now under 200 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Wonderland for the first time since when? Fifth freaking grade. Yes. Fifth grade. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it is so exciting. And it is, uh, I'm so skinny. <laughs> <laughs> me and Carmen just got to see each other last week. And I was like, just so you know, when you see me, you're probably going to have to um, look around because you won't recognize me. I mean, I'm so tiny. <laughs> Well, and gosh, talking about watching you go through this journey and the the self-realization and the the strength and the courage and the bravery that you've had to have, because obviously, you know, um, maybe at some point we'll do a part two, because there's so much of this story that, you know, you were just not going to get to hear at a 20 minute interview. But even going up against the people asking you, even at 200 pounds, when are you going to stop? Haven't you lost enough weight? The people, why can't you just be happy with where you're at? And the fact that you have fought so hard for your goal the heck with what anybody else wants for you like you have said from the beginning like i just want to know what it's like this is you've coined this phrase i want to know what it's like to live in my right size body 
Like, I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be obese. Like, I want to know what it's like to live in the right size body for me. And I, I know, I know we're going to, we're only keeping this at 20 minutes, but I want to just really quick in closing, and I've never asked you this question, but if there's somebody on here who's watching this right now and they're hearing about this, and by the way, if you want to see a part two with Melissa, let us know in the comments if there's any questions you have, anything you'd want to hear, anything you want us to ask her. But what would you say to somebody who's either considering gastric by bypass or sleeve or had it and they've stalled out, they've stopped losing? Like, what would you say? Or even somebody who's struggled with, had a lifetime struggle with their weight, what would you say to them? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Do your research. It is not something to aimlessly wander into. There is so much more to your mental psyche and what has caused you to create these habits that have put you overweight than just simply taking the ability to eat away. There's so much more to it. And if you have not binge watch season one through season four of The Biggest Transformation and beyond. By the time you're watching this video, who knows how many seasons are actually posted. They're in a playlist on her channel. You're an absolute fool. If you do not binge watch those seasons and watch how each individual goes through the process differently with different things up here, this keeps us overweight, not this. It's totally this. And Carmen literally walks you through the process and teaches you how to overcome things you, A, may not have even known was something you needed to overcome, and B, to overcome it for good or at least be equipped in your toolbox, be equipped with the skill to pull out and, oh, okay, that is derailing. I need to get my, get, open up my toolbox and get back out that, that handy little tool and fix that and work on it. Like you're, you're never done. But I've heard you say it, Carmen. You're like, well, that fluffy girl is still in there and she tries to come out. Like you've had your weight off for what, seven years? Yeah. And you still say that, like to, to think you get to somewhere and you've arrived, like I'm done. I've arrived. I mean, you guys, I don't know exactly what my right size body is yet because I have to get closer, but I'm still at least 50 pounds away, 50 pounds away. And that is the least amount of weight I've ever had to lose in my whole life. I'm like, I just have a little tiny 50 pounds to go. And even to be able to say that and feel confident that it's just a little teeny tiny 50 pounds. Like, I know I can get it off because Carmen has showed me exactly what to do step by step by step. And when I feel the track moving sideways, because we all do it, we all slide this way, slide that way. I can go in my toolbox that she's loaded full of awesome applicable things and I can pull my tools out and okay, this is what I need to do. I've, I've been triggered with something. I've been set off because of this. I'm not drinking my water. I, it's just... Yeah. It's really simple. We complicate it. We really complicate it. It's not that complicated. Uh, Melissa, it has been like, it makes my heart so happy to watch you on this journey. And especially because you are a wife and you are a mom and uh, your example, you know, it's one thing to talk the talk. It's another thing to walk the walk and to know that by your example, by your hard work, by your dedication, by your persistence, you are not only changing your family, but your community, the amount of people that your actions have inspired, the ripple effect. You know, when you drop a pebble in the water, it ripples and you have dropped a boulder in the water. And I cannot wait to see over these years to come how your journey, your story is going to impact your community, your state and this world. And so thank you so much for being on tonight. Thank you so much for sharing, inspiring every single per person watching. Make sure you share this. Everybody needs to hear this woman's story. And if you want to be entertained and be inspired, go check out Melissa Hager TV. She is an entertainer. She's got all kinds of crazy things over on her channel. And if you don't know what this woman's doing, she is a mover and she's a shaker and you want to be in the know with anything she is doing. So go check it out. And we will see you back live next Tuesday, same time, same place. Bye, guys.